Well, thank you very much, Ambassador. Um, it's good to be with you and everyone else on the on the platform today. I want to thank the uh, nice, nice and the conference organizers for inviting me to participate um, in this roundtable uh, about the Biden administration's foreign policy. And I thought what I would do with my seven minutes is um, briefly identify what I think um, are Biden's foreign policies distinguishing features, and then take a moment to discuss the challenges that he faces in making good on the course that he has set America on. Now, Biden's foreign policy is obviously a work in progress. The administration is just six months old uh, and much is still being worked through, uh, including ambassadorial appointments. But already, I think we can see three emerging themes or components uh, to um, the administration's foreign policy, which we might call Biden's three R's. These include repairing America's brand, its international brand. Secondly, realigning America's commitments and its power. And thirdly, reconnecting what America does abroad to the needs of working class voters at home. So repairing, realigning, and reconnecting Biden's three R's. When it comes to America's brand, Biden, I think, has lost little time reasserting the nation's traditional commitment to human rights uh, and the rule of law. And this is sure to be a constant theme uh, in the months ahead. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand why. Four years of Donald Trump's indifference to human rights abroad and the flagrant abuse of the rule of law at home took a toll on the United States internationally. And Biden's commitment to repair America's brand is important in an attempt to reverse and to change that dynamic. It doesn't mean that we're going to see perfect consistency on matters having to do with human rights where the democratic values will always trump geopolitical interest. Biden's meeting with Putin in Geneva earlier this month made that pretty clear, I think, if it wasn't already. The point is, is that under Biden, I think advocating human rights and the rule of law is once again considered a strategic resource in America's diplomatic toolbox and of intrinsic value in themselves. And so I think that we will see more and hear more about this uh, in the months uh, and the years ahead. Like most presidents, Biden took office with clear ideas about what parts of the world are most vital to US security and how heavily to invest in alliances to protect them. In Biden's case, two things are already, I think, pretty clear about his strategic priorities. First, he is focusing far greater attention on the strategic heartland of Eurasia than his predecessor. And secondly, that he hopes to do this in close coordination with America's traditional allies in Europe and in Asia, and to the extent possible, others uh, such as India. Much of this effort, of course, is focused on China with actions that range from reinvigorating the Quad to recommitting to Taiwan security to the recent NATO summit declaring China as a security risk to the G7's agreement to launch a green alternative to China's Belt and Road program to winding down America's military presence uh, in Afghanistan. And I think the Pentagon's global force posture review, which is still in process, will almost certainly reinforce this direction of kind of strategic travel by the United States. So that's, we've talked about 
repairing America's brand, realigning commitments in power, and how I think Biden is going to try to do this and is doing it. And that brings us to reconnecting to the middle class, the third component, I think, of Biden's strategy. Dean Acheson once said, there's no longer any difference between foreign questions and domestic questions. They're all part of the same question. He said that back in 1950. This was true in Acheson's day, and Biden has pledged to make it a cardinal principle of his foreign policy in his pledge to reconnect what America does abroad to the needs of working families at home. If this sounds a little bit like Donald Trump's America first, you're not mistaken. Though free of the xenophobia and the racism and the unilateralism that Trump's vision entailed, Biden has declared that he is not going to pursue foreign economic policies that serve the needs of the few at the expense of the many. What this has meant concretely is putting multilateral trade agreements like TPP and TTIP on hold. It has meant strengthening Buy America provisions in federal procurement policies in the United States and proposing multi-trillion dollar investments in domestic technology, in domestic infrastructure, and in sustainability. So these are the core features, I think, of Biden's emerging foreign policy. He's trying to repair America's image in the world. He's trying to refocus on America's traditional commitments in Eurasia. And he's trying to reconnect what America does abroad with the needs of people at home. What unites these three elements of Biden's foreign policy, I think, is a commitment to re-engage internationally, but in ways that play to America's comparative strategic advantages, its allies, its huge economy, and its somewhat tarnished values. Now, whether Biden can deliver on all of this, that is uncertain. In my view, the strategy rests on two big bets, one international, the other domestic. So let me briefly say a word about each by way of concluding. Biden's international bet is that he can regain the support of America's many allies in dealing with international challenges and especially in dealing with China. And he has made a good deal of progress, I would say, on this front since taking office, most notably at the G7 and NATO meetings earlier this month. But there are challenges here. And one is simply that many of America's allies are not willing to sign up to another Cold War with this one with China. A second is that America's allies wonder whether Biden is the new normal in the United States or just a kind of fleeting reprieve from Trump's America first. It's worth recalling that Trump won 74 million votes in a losing cause. This brings us to Biden's second bet, domestic politics. And Biden's ability to make good on his international agenda depends greatly on his ability to overcome the deep political division in Washington and beyond. And here, I think the jury is very much out. Biden is working with very thin margins in Congress, which are likely to disappear with the midterm elections in 2022. So if Biden hopes to convince America's allies that the U.S. is really back, as he says, he needs to show that his policies command support at home. Conversely, if he hopes to secure the support of Americans for his foreign policies, he needs to demonstrate that they are paying concrete economic dividends for average Americans. And this is Biden's challenge. The two things are interrelated, interconnected, and there's a lot riding on it and on his ability to meet it and not just for the United States. And I'll leave it right there and turn it back, turn the platform back to the other speakers. Thank you very much.